Double XL's the break is for all you aspiring rappers who need a little help getting on. This is the place to get all the info on how to make it in hip hop from some of the biggest and most experienced names in the game, like me, your dope boy Troy Av. Pay attention, and special guests drop knowledge to help you become a star. This is Double XL's The Break Podcast. What's up? This is Vanessa Satin and Miranda Johnson from Double XL, and this is episode three of XXL's The Break Podcast free information for new artists who need to listen to new information because <laughs> today's one of those days we've been listening to a lot of new artists and they need mm-hmm. to take some lessons. So uh, today's topic is uh, make it in your city or getting out of it. Owning your city or getting out of it. So that's basically, you know, how do you own your city, whether it be New York or LA or Atlanta, which, you know, have a lot of competition in them, or something like a South Carolina, I guess these are states, but we know city states, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, or South Carolina or Minneapolis or uh, Mississippi, you know, and if you're an artist from one of those areas, how do you get heard from there Um, and take over the city? The other side of that is also how do you get out of there? So how do you get fans outside of your hometown and how important is that? Um, for this, Miranda, who we talked to, we talk, we've been talking to so many people for this, so I hope you guys appreciate it. But um, <laughs> um, we spoke to Kid Ink. We spoke uh, to Kid Ink, mm-hmm. West Coast. Yes, Zach Excel freshman. Woo woo. Um, and then Zach Quillen, the manager of Macklemore and Ryan Lewis. Yes, Zach is a great interview, and so is Riggs. We have Riggs, uh, Riggs Morales, who's mm-hmm. from um, Atlantic, and he what's his title? He's VP of A and R. VP of A and R. Right. So mm-hmm. we've got a whole bunch of guys who know what they're talking about. And I think let's start off with uh, the Kid Ink interview, right? Yeah. Let's go right to the artist and see what he says about owning your city and getting out of it. First question I have for you is, um, you're a new artist, you're from L.A., Mm -hmm. that's where you're from, or California. Um, When you're from Atlanta, California, New York, there's a lot of different artists, so it it can be more competitive. How do you come out as a new artist and start to make your way with all of the competition that's there, and how do you suggest for someone to do it now? Um, well, I think definitely uh, the first step is, you know what I'm saying, paying attention to the people around and really singling down your competition. I feel like a lot of people get into too competitive like of a nature with people who aren't really cross-branding them or crossing their competition. And, you know what I'm saying, you got to figure out who you could rock with and who could, you know what I'm saying, help you out and you're not all against each other. And you can see stuff, stuff happen like that with people like TDE or, you know what I'm saying, different camps that... None of those guys are all the same kind of artists or live in the same neighborhood, but figure out how to come together with our future and all that. You know what I'm saying? So I think it starts with definitely figuring out what your competition is and making sure you're outworking them if you're not teaming up with them. And I think for me, the biggest thing I did that I had to do, especially hopping out of L.A., where it was such a boxed-in you know, sound and everything like that is, I had to kind of step out of my own sound, probably do things that, you know what I'm saying, weren't west coast sounding or you know that don't sound like they're from your city but still incorporate the you know language and the content from your city to make not only the people around you understand and still rock with it but outside too when you start traveling because i think i came up and everyone didn't know where i was from at first and i was just kind of like but i'm saying it you know what i'm saying in my records but i'm not doing the same kind of music that you know somebody like maybe even nipsey or, or yg was doing at the time to make it more known to the city because you know what i'm saying it had a certain vibe to it or a certain slang to it and probably you know what i'm saying just in the hook or just from the beat or just something like that technical or the feature on the song i think it was just stepping out the box of that too grabbing features from people outside of different areas and being like yo i rock with this dude from houston and i'm gonna go you know grab him and you know do this record with him and hopefully get some fans out there and then when i move outside of my city the people in my city are going to notice, you know what I'm saying, and kind of separate me from the other people who aren't moving outside. It's like only so much you can do inside the city and be a street celebrity until afterwards, you know what I'm saying, people are like, well, that guy hasn't been home in a while. You right. know what I'm saying? What's he been getting into? What's he been doing? So definitely comes from that, too. It, it's well, when you're from a different city, so for instance, if somebody's from um, New Jersey with a Fetty Wap is a good mm-hmm. example, you know, everybody gets excited now. New Jersey's going to be on the map again or something. Right. When you're from a city like L.A., you don't have everybody pulling for you the same way. No. Or when you're from California, you don't have everybody pulling for you. Like, mm-hmm. you know, we, we interviewed a Dej Loaf and she said, everyone in Detroit's pulling for me right now, you know, and wants me to win. So 
when you're from a city that's got so many people that are trying to get on, mm. what do you do with that that you don't have that whole feeling of the whole city behind you? Do you feel on your own? How do you mm. how do you move with that? And how much does the person who does have their city on their back like a Macklemore um, have something extra than you did, you know? Well, yeah, no, definitely the people who are from cities where it's not like striving artists and from the past, like now or the past or where it's like a small town or even, you know, you just look at, I can think Jay Cole's from like the Carolinas or something, right. right? Like it's like those, there's not a lot of people, there's probably people out there, but there's no one striving or making it, you know what I'm saying, successful to where when you do get that, the people are rooting for you and going harder and that doesn't happen in LA. You have to like... It feels like the opposite. Like, I feel like I'm rooting for the DJs to get them to root for me. You know what I'm saying? I'm doing more favors. It's a very favored game, I feel like, uh, these days to where I'm definitely going in. And, you know, I was coming up in the game, hitting up DJs and telling them, like, yo, rock with me. I'll come to the club with you. You know what I'm saying? We'll do a couple songs with you. And it's giving them that that hype, too, and making them feel like they're bigger or even getting them a bigger check if once you get to that. You know what I'm saying? Once you get to that point. But in the beginning, you got to just do favors. You know, you. I was running and doing a lot of free events, a lot of free shows, you know, for different DJs, for different stations, and really, you know, growing that relationship there to where, you know, when stuff did make sense, they were like, oh, yeah, I remember everything that, you know what I'm saying, you did before and all that grind, and they kind of see that, that work up grind, even if they're not really supporting at first, because believe it's a million DJs that now act like they were super supporters in the beginning, and it's like, nah, bro, you were the one playing me the left the whole time when it was your little homie who was giving me all the Easy love. don't remember but, that, yeah. Right, but since you're paying attention to what he's doing, now you're rocking with me now. But, you know, I think it's really all about stepping out of that box and giving people something brand new to separate yourself. Even if it's a lot of artists I can see did that with the Fetty Wap situation. Uh, it's people from Jersey still supporting him and doing it, you know what I'm saying, big, but at the same time, I don't know necessarily if the people from Jersey would have supported the actual record itself from it not sounding anything like a record that would come out of Jersey from, right. you know what I'm saying, someone not from Jersey. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't have noticed that he was from Jersey until it was, you know what I'm saying, something that I would have had to read up on. So from there, I'm sure he gained so many other fans, like, in other, you know, areas who didn't know, cause, and they weren't holding it against him. So sometimes, you know, even with ASAP, first time I heard ASAP, I didn't know where he was from. I, a lot of people kept telling me Houston or this and this and that. And I think even if he wasn't, people from Houston probably still gravitated towards him and was like, well, they keep saying he's from here. Let's see what it sounds like. And then they kind of respect And then it. when and you then get then the co-sign from the vets there and they, and they and they give the clearance, you know, yeah. and say, yeah, we fuck with this guy. Right. That helps too. Definitely helps a lot. And I think L.A. was so strong on that at first to where I still haven't had that. West Coast Coastline. Like, I haven't had Game. And you don't need it. Dre, right. Snoop. Nobody's come up to me. Like, behind the scenes, we've all conversated and talked, but no one's gone on and was like, this is the new guy. You know, and I think it it, it kind of, even at the same time, helped Kendrick in his in his situation. Not saying that it, it wasn't deserved at the time, I'm sure, for him. It but, definitely helped Kendrick because you've got the setup of the right. history of the successes of Dre with Eminem right. and, and 50 Cent, you know, what Dre is setting up, can Kendrick be that, and the the beast that is Interscope. Right, and I think that, you know what I'm saying, some people have those moments where they have to live up to other things, some people have to just grow from the bottom, and I think, you know, not saying that, the, you know what I'm saying, because I still know Kendrick's grind, I know where Kendrick's come from with the mixtapes, and I know a lot of people that's run around him and that, that, you know what I'm saying, support, but I can't really tell his behind-the-scenes story, more so than, you know, I know that I had to really grind as far as you know there were no cosigns it was a lot of proving it to people but that were in, in my own city even before. in your city the DJs are bigger stars already yeah. than in a city that's not so hip hop so even getting to the right DJs have to be part of the challenge when you're nobody right and that's and that's you know not it's not that you know simple of a thing especially now cuz the DJs are familiar with it first it, it seemed like you were able to run up on DJs more DJs have security right. and, you know, They're a little section too, yeah. and all that. And you can't even go say what's up to a DJ without, like, I could be walking up and they can be like, hold on, let me ask him first if it's okay if you go say what's up. And it's like, you know, sometimes you just want to go acknowledge a DJ, especially if they played your record or did something like that. But it's definitely a, a Hollywood scene with those DJs to where I feel like it went from back in the day where they were charging. 
Because I remember that back in the day where I used to, you know what I'm saying, talk to DJs and things, and they used to give numbers. Right. Like, and they used to be like, wow, y'all really charging us just to play records and things like that. Like, it's no support in the city. And I definitely get upset when I go to other cities like Atlanta and places where I'm listening to the radio. And I'm like, I'm listening. Like, I know this is not what any label told y'all to play. Right. Like, y'all are playing anything you want to play back to back to back. Your friends, your family. Like, I've never heard this song before, and you're going to make it work in your city first, and it's going to move. Definitely doesn't have it. It's the opposite. You got to make it like for me in LA. I had to make it work outside the city, and then bring it back. And I felt like I always say in the interviews, I never got the actual respect from the city as much as I wanted until I was on the freshman cover, and I was the only person from LA. Like technically, like it's a lot of people that are quote unquote from LA, but technically, and I think you know that kind of helped out. Especially you know I could have been could have named from any city and tried to be from here and try to start something new and you know I feel like even with Compton I feel like Compton is still that's outside of LA for me and it's still somewhere that you know it's it's has people that have made it but you know it's still I feel like Compton's easier to to make it out of like I feel like Compton kind of they give you more support the story the whatever the story they, everything they ties like you that. into yeah. when I first got signed they thought I was from Compton just because like they wanted just, you to be right it was see you're from Compton right like no nah, nah I don't go to Compton for anything like <laughs> yeah you know, just like not in my regular schedule at all so you know for me I feel like it's it's certain places within the city and where you can get like different acknowledgement whether if you're from Compton if you just say South Central and then it gives you a background story between someone else's right. history but if you're trying to do it a different way and coming from a different area in LA it definitely it's all a grind and you know what I'm saying as far as making that and it's a lot of people that I've seen grind up and make it there and it's a lot of people that I've seen that couldn't take the you know what I'm saying they had the patience for it if you're a kid in uh, two qu- more questions if you're a kid in Alabama trying to get on and I just picked it randomly if you're a kid in Minnesota What's your advice to them? I mean, if they Minnesota don't have they don't have those DJs. They yeah. don't have that scene. They right, might not even have yeah. the rappers coming through to perform as regularly to even try to get to the shows. Mm-hmm. What would your two cents be to a kid who is outside of their city trying to get on? Because it's kind of the opposite of what yeah. you've had to do, yeah. but also you've had to have seen it, you know? Wait, I think for me, what I was lucky to come into the game during the internet game and during the you know social media phase, and I feel like it's very strong and like sometimes more beneficial than walking through the streets like you know I had a lot of friends that went through the streets and used to sell mixtapes hand to hand still when the internet came out they were still selling hand to hand and I was like man it's the internet's out like just put it up someone's gonna see it and someone's gonna gravitate so towards how it much somehow. do you think social played a role in building yourself up early on a lot because you know I think for me a lot of visuals I, I think the biggest thing I had was visuals so for me you know people seeing my face seeing the videos and then kind of, you know, put in the music. Like, my music and my face didn't grow at the same time. Mm-hmm. So, like, I had songs that a lot of people knew that were bigger than me, and then I had a lot of people who just knew me that were bigger than the songs. And I kind of had to bring them both together. And I think, you know, it definitely was just a lot of content and on the Internet and letting people know and, you know what I'm saying, There's so many different waves now that I'm not even into that are passing, like, SoundCloud and putting these and all these different, you know, outlets... You definitely got to keep grinding. I put out about four mixtapes before, you know, uh, I was, like, in a position to even try an independent album. And, you know, it was all about, like I said earlier, finding your competition that you feel like is your competition. That's my next question for you is how do you, how, how do you find who your competition is and be realistic? Because most people are not realistic about where their stature is. Right. And they'll make their competition bigger than them and you're like well you're already not having a, a, a real conversation right right so how do you keep in perspective who your competition even is I think it's definitely your peers you have to really be realistic about who your peers are and what you're doing and what they're doing and be humble about it and not you know what I'm saying because you could feel like your competition musically and lyrically could be somebody crazy up here you could feel like alright I'm about to take Jay Z out but you have to still be realistic as your brand and as an artist and understanding what you're talking about that you know what I'm saying certain things that you gotta make make sense you can't be the brand new rapper like you said coming from Minnesota where it's not even DJs and a bunch of clubs happening and you're talking about popping bottles every weekend and riding this kind of car and doing this to try to compete with a peer who's all the way up here when you should be trying to figure out what's more relatable to the people who are actually about to buy your, you know what I'm saying, music or come to your show. And it's really working from the ground up. If I didn't have, like, I I would trade 
taking a slower route after going through it and seeing other people can take the faster route, I'd rather take the slow route of not selling, you know what I'm saying, myself away and having this crazy hit single and growing from the bottom all the way up to where people, you know what I'm saying, like you have to make the face and the songs match and those core fans feel like they're a part of it. All right, so Kid Ink seems like he's got a little uh, a knowledge of what's going on there. What do you think was interesting about what he said, Miranda? Um, I think he's a very good interview because he's someone who is from um, what we would call a, a big city. You know, he's from LA. We would call it a big city, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> and um, he's got no cosigns, and he kind of really just grinded and got out of his city on his own. So he, to me, gave a lot of valuable information for, you know, someone who the real listener of this podcast, like what they would be seeking. You know what I mean? It's not like he had like, you know, that Dr. Dre or that like, you know, that the game cosign or anything. Well, he said he got his biggest look after he was on the freshman cover, which I thought was interesting. I mean, I know the way we picked Kid Ink for freshman was when we saw his live performance, we were very sold on that early on, you know, Um, from, from what I recall. But it's interesting that he said he felt, you know, he managed to get a little bit more of an opportunity and scene. And that is a, as a competitive city, but after freshman, which then being the only one on there, you know, gave him respect, which I get mm-hmm. makes sense. You know, it, it can't be the only answer for everybody, but it, it is interesting to think about, you know, in a city that has a lot of people, what do you have to do to stand out? You have to make a freshman cover. There's got to be right. a little bit more to it than that. But um, he also explained, which I thought was honest was that the DJs are superstars these days too, right? Yeah. You know, and and then and the DJs actually have security and to de- get to them <laughs> is hard. So, you know, if you're in your own city and you're trying to figure out how to get to the local DJ, you know, you might not be able to get them as easy as you would back in the days. But the other thing is, does that matter as much, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I don't know. What do you think? I love when he said, um, a good thing he said was like kind of just like realizing that everybody in your city is not your competition. Right, realize yeah, who your competition is. I love that because a lot of the times rappers come out and everyone in their city is automatically competition. But that's not Even a if they're the, a huge big dog, like, right. you know, you're going to be from New York and want to take out Jay Z to start. Right. And Jay Z is clearly not your competition so that's someone you want to big up that's someone you kind of want to butter up like you know what i mean so i love how he made note to say like you know everyone is not your competition although some are but just kind of like you know establishing who that is but weird enough that goes back to what wale said a few episodes ago which is established and and i think mike karen and a few people is Mm -hmm. what kind of artist are you going jay grand what kind of artist are you going to be figure out you know are you doing it for you are you doing it for the money are you what we call the blue collar artist you know that you know this is how you survive you know not check to check but being able to be a rapper is the most important thing and make money off of it, not being able to be a superstar. Mm-hmm. So I think that, that it all comes down to the same thing is you've got to decide who you are as an artist. Right. And then that's going to help you, I guess, with what Kid Ink said, decide who your competition is and be realistic about it. Mm-hmm. All right. So next we talk to, and remember, guys, we did these interviews over the past couple months. So uh, if they sound old, it's not that they're old. It's just that they weren't immediately posted. So, you know, the knowledge is indefinitely invaluable but um just giving you the heads up there so we spoke to zap quillen um seattle i was very interested in zach i think that that's somebody who doesn't get tapped into very much for information when you got to look at what he's been involved in so far Mm -hmm. with macklemore and and ryan lewis and um so let's check it out well my name is zach quillen i am the manager uh for macklemore and ryan lewis um in addition to that I look after their publishing, touring, production, run the record label, and all sorts of other stuff. So, uh, you know, one of the topics we've been talking to, we we talk to a lot of different people, a lot of different new artists, and one of the things that we notice is that, you know, artists will get stuck in their city when it's not kind of a hip-hop city, meaning pretty much Atlanta, L.A., and New York for the most part, although there is, you know, some Miami and Houston. So when you're from, you know, talking about Macklemore versus to Seattle, it's not a traditional hip hop city. How does, how did Macklemore? How does the team that you work on? How does an artist from Seattle, which isn't traditionally hip hop, get heard? That's I think the question that the biggest question that that artists have when they're not from a, a hip hop city is, how do you hear me? What is what do you pay attention to? Um, yeah. What do, you, what do you what do you suggest? Um, it's a good it's a good question, and it was, you know, something I think you know, Ben Macklemore thought about forever, you know, and he was, you know, I think 
you know, aspiring and trying to figure it out himself. And I think felt that weight um, quite a bit at the early stages of trying to make it. You know, I'm in Seattle. There's there's a scene here, but there's not infrastructure here, and there's not eyeballs here. Um, so how do I how do I be seen? How do I become heard? Um, you know, and what's slow... important? What's what's a waste of time? What's important? What, what yeah. don't chase down? You know, is the radio scene there worth worth focusing right. on or not? That kind of thing, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think you know the most important thing is figuring out what makes you special and what makes the music or the music videos or whatever else you're creating special, unique. Like, why are people connecting with it? And then figuring out how to get those people closest to you um, to connect with it and become, you know, part of your voice. You know, the more people talking about the thing that you're doing, the better. And, you know, it's kind of like the fast way and the slow way. There's the old, the old slow way, which is touring and word of mouth, um, which is still integral, still important as its place. But the fast way, obviously, is the Internet and utilizing all of the free accessible tools that it has to offer because um, the reality is, you know, without the without the internet, there might not have been a globally known Macklemore. You know what I mean? It's just right. it would have taken it certainly would have taken a lot more time, but the internet fast tracked it and allowed people to share it. But a huge part of that was forming that foundation of people that already cared about it that were going to share it. And most of those people in the early days for us were here in Seattle in our backyard. So you can't, you can't just look at the internet and forget who's in your backyard because you still need that early group of people that are going to make a lot of noise about what you're doing. And more often than not, those people are going to be down the street from you. Right. So, I mean, so it, it's get your city before you get out of your city. Yeah. You, I mean, I think you have to admit, lots of people don't though. And that's the thing, like, you know, there are, because of the internet and how fast things can take off, you can, uh, you know, you, anybody can upload a song to SoundCloud today and, you know, the right few people hear it, it, it turns into a very quick moment for them. But the reality is oftentimes, you know, there's not a lot of meat to those moments. It's a lot of, you know, flash and these things dissolve very quickly. So you still need that core group of people that are going to care about you after that one song on SoundCloud. You know what I mean? They're going to continue to tell the story and tell their friends and share. And, and those people you have to make a personal connection with. Those now, after, just be after you, sorry, after you've gotten that core fan, after you've gotten that, that the ones that you've made the personal connection with, and you've gotten that local audience, what are the things? I mean, besides just assaulting the internet, what are some of the things that, if you're in Seattle, if you're in one of those cities, you should focus on? Is it getting out of the city on shows out of town? Should you stop at some point, you know, doing local shows because it makes more sense to now take your music and take your performance out of the town? Is it getting yeah. festivals? Is it getting a uh, you know, what is it focusing on the DJ? Does the DJ in, in that city not have as much power because the DJ is the one that has the rappers and the known people coming through to them? Yeah. Like, what, what are those moves that you suggest for there? I think those are all good things, but you know what? None of them matter if you're not captivating, you know? So yeah. if you, you have to put, and I think the, the step that a lot of young emerging artists get is figuring out how to be the best at their craft and the most captivating they can be before thinking about any of that other shit. Because once you're there, once you have the ear of your local DJ or once you're touring outside of your town or playing a festival or whatever, and you have that audience now, you're, you know, people are showing up and they want to see you um, or you're being put in front of them. You have to, you have to win. You have to sell it and you have to be your best and you have to be captivating. So there's a lot of folks that, blow up on the internet, they upload a song, they end up, you know, oh shit, all of a sudden I'm on Coachella or I'm on Bonnaroo or whatever, or, you know, my local DJ is fucking with me heavy, uh, but they're not ready. And so you put them in front of people more, or you put them in a, on a, in a live setting and they don't deliver. And that's when those moments can become very quick. So if you want to stick around, you think about what makes me interesting, what makes, you know, me, um, captivating. And then yes, all the things that you mentioned, now, how do I find those people? How do I make how do I make more of those people? There's some people in my hometown that are making noise about me. Okay, how do I expand upon that? And that includes touring for sure. Right, that makes sense. And then what do you think is a waste of time? Um, I think anything anything that you're putting time or money into um, when you're not to that stage of your career, when you're not the 
kind of uh, the version of the artist you really want to be and you're the most proud of. Because right. I've seen that a lot. You know, there's people that are like, all right, I'm pretty good. I played a couple shows. Now I'm going to spend, you know, twenty thousand dollars on a music video. I'm going to spend ten thousand dollars on a publicist. I'm going to do all this traveling. I just got the opening slot on so and so's tour. I'm going to go dump a bunch of money into that or whatever. Um, and I've seen all those things crash and burn. All right. So there's no denying that Zach knows what he's talking about. For you sure. know, and we see we've got that new Macklemore project coming out. You know, and and we've seen the new video and everything. Um, what did you think was most interesting? Um, I love how he kind of was saying that the internet helps along with you getting your city. So first he was saying how Macklemore kind of got Seattle behind him. And then from that point, he used the internet to expand even further. I thought that was a good point to kind of like, you know, get your city and then use your city to kind of help you expand beyond your city. Cause you know, when you post that music online, those people from Seattle will be the ones kind of sharing your music to their cousins. And well, the, the chances that you're Seattle yeah. fan, if you're from Seattle, the chances that Seattle's going to support you first. So that's mm-hmm. the idea. And I think we see that with a lot of artists is that, okay, so depending on where you're from, you know, let's put the big cities aside. But if you're working with the more obscure cities, if you're working with, you know, I'm making it up, but of course, Mississippi or or North Carolina or, you know, I guess we're calling them <laughs> cities, but they are states. But mm-hmm. we know what we mean. Um, then your city wants to get behind you. You know, I think... Mm-hmm we can see something with Fetty Wap, does Jersey want to get behind him, you know, and then once Jersey gets behind him, really more importantly is that the A&Rs start looking and hip hop starts looking at that city. Right. Because it's cool, you got one artist from here, well, who else is going on in Jersey now that Jersey's hot? We saw that in 2005 or whatever with um, with Houston mm-hmm. and people jumping on the bandwagon there and seeing, you know, okay, let's get all of our attention on that city right now because of Paul Wong, Chameleon Air, and Slim Thug. And sometimes that city you wind up and seeing it has the legs to produce a little bit more, a few more artists, and sometimes you wind up not getting too much out of it. Right. But I think that's an example with Seattle that, you know, that uh, Zach was trying to make, you know? Mm-hmm. Interesting enough. Yeah. I love what he said, too. He said um, songs without core fans kind of don't last. So I love how he said, like, you know, you have to kind of establish that core fan base. Because if you, even if you have a hot song, if you don't have that core fan base, the song is kind of going to die out. You know what I mean? Like, And what you said with Fetty in Jersey, I feel like Jersey was his kind of core fans that kind of made that Trap Queen, like, you know, last or made it People want to rep you. People yeah. want to rep you. I mean, I guess it's hard, you know, how to get people to rep you when you're from a city that already has artists but then that builds into what's your social movement how do you you know to get heard to begin with Mm -hmm. but once you establish any sort of little name for yourself within that city people your city wants that's something about hip-hop your city wants to support you Mm -hmm. they want to get on on the bandwagon and follow you and promote you and be on you very early on so if you think if your city if whoever those fans are have social they're going to retweet and repost and do everything that you post to get it out there even more. Right. So focusing and caring about your city, if the opportunity arises and you've, and you've got that feedback, seems like you get a lot out of it because you get cheerleaders out of it pretty much, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And of course he says what makes you special, you know, which I think mm-hmm. well, I guess is the recurring theme for everybody right. we speak to is what makes you in particular special, which you know, I'm sure rappers have no idea hard time figuring out no, yeah, you know? right. <laughs> uh, all right so now we're talking to Riggs I know Riggs has got a, a, another name but all I know is Riggs is it Rigberto Morales I'm not totally sure but Riggs is the vice president of A&R at Atlantic right and Riggs has been around for a while I remember him from those shady days and he was actually I think a freelance writer back in the day maybe not for us but um for some other publications. Anyway, let's hear what Riggs has to say to new artists about getting out of your city and owning it. Okay, so one of the things we're going to talk to you about is with a lot of time with new artists, there's something that we feel over and over is that what artists love to do is, you know, rep their city. I'm from New York. I'm the best thing out of Chicago, da 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 How important for a new artists would you say is it to dominate your city, keeping in mind that New York and L.A. is different than Memphis, you know? Interesting, because traditionally, that's supposed to be the the, the play where you dominate your city and then grow from there. But over the last couple of years, due to the Internet and and some artists in particular, it seems like breaking out of your city has actually been more beneficial, which I usually encourage folks to do as well. Um, Not only to see the world, but to also maybe 
there's there's an audience that appreciates your music that might not necessarily be in your hometown. A um, couple of cases would be, you know, Drake. Drake is from Toronto, but broke mostly, you know, here in the States via New York and Houston. J. Cole from North Carolina, who broke from New York. Um, uh, J. Electronica, Currency. These are both artists from New Orleans that found themselves coming to New York and evolving a little bit more. Um, recently, there's an artist that I signed named Danny Seth, who is from London, but is coming here to establish himself. And so far, it's been working because... The music that he makes is appreciated more here than it is back at his home base. So it's interesting because the last couple of years has been different from tradition, which is, of course, take over your backyard and then grow from there. Right. So now it seems like the big difference would be, like, are you from a hip-hop city? So if you're a new artist from New York, you're a new artist from L.A., you're a new artist from Atlanta, and you're trying to get on versus you're from North Carolina, you're from Toronto, you're from even New Orleans or different cities like that, which don't have the regular thriving hip hop scene. How much should you focus on trying to dominate your city or not even? Like, how much is that? How do you treat if you're from a popular hip hop city versus you're not a popular hip hop city? Of how much you, you should focus on getting that city on your back? You know, Macklemore getting Seattle is a big deal, but it's also there are not a lot of rappers in Seattle at that time, you know? So it becomes even a bigger deal because this guy is representing for the whole town. When if you're big in Atlanta, you're never going to represent for the whole town because there's a lot of people in Atlanta, right? Yeah, you have the benefit of being that big fish in the small pond, and the small pond being some of those lesser known states, uh, Cleveland, um, Chattanooga, which is where Isaiah Rashad is from. I remember back in the days when when Master P first came out, New Orleans just popped out of the blue. He put it on the map. After that, of course, there's a whole flood of great talent that came from over there, including Cash Money, Little Wayne, and so on and so forth. Um, interestingly enough, I think, <clears throat> excuse me, I think it's not mandatory anymore to leave, uh, to, to, leave to, 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 to take over your city. Do I suggest you give it a try? Absolutely. But if you're coming from a big city, just know that, you got a you got a pretty big battle up ahead of you, you know, because especially you come from a big city, there's different facets of that city. Take Chicago, for example. Chicago has drill. They have progressive. They have some of that vibe centric stuff that the kids are into now. Like it's it's a it's a mixture. And usually the better ones, I guess, thanks to the internet, start developing their own fan following. It's almost like not even almost, but thanks to the internet, you can grow an audience, you know, while you're in your backyard. Uh, New York, for example, still been a tough thing to, to 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 crack over the last few years. Like, you know, I uh, you have ASAP who happens to be from New York. You have Action Bronson who happens to be from New York. But their music, star, their music and their following transcends beyond. That's why they can do festivals. Whereas you have someone like a Troy Ave who, yeah, he took over his backyard. But I think in comparison to some of the other acts that I that I spoke about, you know, I don't, I'm not sure how big of an audience he has waiting for him outside of New York. Right, 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 right. So how do you, how much do you focus on that? How much is an artist like Troy, how much do these artists, I mean, how do they decide in your expertise to focus on their study, to focus on getting out of the city? I would always suggest folks to get out of the city and just see the world. Because, I mean, for me personally, I've noticed it, 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 it builds for a more compelling story when you leave your city. Otherwise, you're going to have to stay in your city and really battle it out with everybody else. And big cities like small cities are there's crabs in a barrel, you right. know, um, unless it's a place it's like, unless it's L.A. L.A. seems to have a more unified front and nobody's really a threat to what every person is doing. Kendrick is different from YG. YG is a little different from OT Genesis. OT Genesis is a little different from J-Rock and so on and so forth, you know, and there seems to be some sort of unity there. Some of the bigger cities, not always the case. The smaller cities, even more, because everybody wants to get out of there first. So I would always encourage to build your audience outside of your city. You know, try to take over your city. That would be great. But leaving outside of your city is, I, I find it to be the most beneficial because you're you're appealing to an audience that actually appreciates your music as opposed to the folks in your own backyard that are like, huh, yeah, okay, I see him all the time. Oh, or else they're really excited for you, not because they love their music, but because someone who's close to them is starting to blow up. But then how much are they really invested, right? They're not invested as early as, as they should be, and they always, I tell you, Macklemore being the, the prime example, 
they always come back. They're always like, oh, somebody's from our city. Wow, let's go. Like, they'll rally around you when you've made it, you know? Yeah. And then how much they, in, 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 a, in connecting it to owning your city, getting out of your city, how much of you, you should be stuck on the sound of your city, you know? A lot of people think that they make music from a certain city and they should, you know, the Atlanta scene should be Trapper Rapper and all that. You know, how much is it to take that sound with you and be identifiable to the city you're from versus to step out from it? I mean, you have Chicago where you're going to have a Biddy and you're going to have a Dirk and you're going to have um, a Herb, but then you're going to have a Vic Mensa and a uh, Chance, and those guys are going to have distinct different sounds. Yeah, no, listen, it's it's even more difficult when you come from a big city and the big city is known for a particular sound, like New York, right? Like with New York, nobody has that quote-unquote New York-centric sound except for maybe Action Bronson, but he's not heavily reliant on it. That's just part of his aesthetic. Whereas someone like a French Montana is a little bit more international and his sound isn't necessarily New York-centric. And it has that southern swing to it. Uh, that's something that even worked for Fifth early on. He, you know, kind of did a great mixture of of his New York centric sound with a little bit of that Southern swing. So having the sound of the city, it's, it's 50, 50. I would always suggest get the sound of your city and then take it to another level where it could become broader because the sound of your city might actually hinder you. That means that it might not appeal to the ears down South or Midwest. It's it really varies. That's why for me, when I'm looking for an artist, I'm looking for something unique. First off, the fact that he's from a small city is super appealing for me because Hip hop has fifty plus states, and we only have about five or six that we mandatorily go to: Chicago, right. Cali, and whatnot, and the, the, the usual cities. But when I hear somebody from Minneapolis, my ears perk up. When I hear somebody from Alaska, my ears perk up because it's like, okay, there's something something unique coming out of here. There's a different story being told. You know, Is it also unique. about making you know, like making that new location? So if you were able to make Milwaukee, you know, a new hot spot where you find an artist and they blew up then everybody starts to go look at Milwaukee for another one that you just signed. It becomes the place that everybody's eyes goes towards, right? Yeah, that happens. That happened with Chicago a couple of years ago. Remember before Kanye, yeah. it was pretty quiet over there. It was like uh, hay in the middle of the barn. was the crucial conflict and Twister? And then Kanye pretty much opened doors for folks to look at, taking the second look at the city. Right. And look what's come out of there since. Right. Right, 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 right. So that was Riggs. Um, I really agreed when he said that um, being from a small city is kind of better nowadays. It's easier, like, again, sorry to bring up Fetty, but Fetty seems to be the real. We're from Jersey, so. Right, yes, and I was totally behind Fetty. We know. Um, (laughs) Fetty bandwagon. But um, being from a small city nowadays is better because, you know, it's easier for people to get behind you and rep you versus, you know, you being from L.A. or New York and there's a million other kind of hot artists that you kind of have to steal people's fans versus when you're from a small city, there's people who are like, you know, dying to just hop on the bandwagon. It's definitely true. It's just you can't help which from what city you're from. Right. I mean, you're not going to get somebody to say, I'm from Atlanta, let me move over to some rural, no-name city that I'm not sure of <laughs> to blow up from there because they have such a thriving scene. The problem is is that you get drawn. I mean, we've even seen over the years, Common moved to Brooklyn, Kid Cudi moved to Brooklyn, Mac Miller lives in Brooklyn now, you mm-hmm. know. I guess Brooklyn is there's a message with Brooklyn right there, but that, you know, they'll come to New York, but I think it's hard to get people to... It's weird to get you to mo- go and move to a different city to try and get established. So mm-hmm. you have to decide, okay, I'm this kind of artist. I'm from a city that's got a lot of competition because no matter what, hip-hop lives in New York, right. L.A., and Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Um, so you have to decide, okay, well, you have to keep that in perspective. I'm from here. What are the moves I have to make? This is my competition within this city. This is who I'm going against. And I think when you're from a smaller city, you have to look out and say, all right, my competition is over here, over here, their follower, fo- you know, further away when there's a hip-hop show in town it's usually related to me because i'm the local hip-hop artist um but that also is what rig said is the big fish small pond syndrome so you know when you're the shit in your hometown sometimes you don't know how to deal with it outside of your hometown because you're so used to being treated a certain way and then you get outside of there and you're not getting that treatment how uh, can your ego take it because ego always plays a role like you have to figure out how to deal with the fact that I'm a big dude here in the junior high, but when I went into the high school, you know, I became a dime a dozen. There were a lot of other popular kids. 
it, it, it's a lot of rappers are out of touch. They're so out of touch, and it's just like even the new ones. Yeah, <laughs> even the new ones. You don't know how many um, freshmen um, greatest of all times come up here with their attitudes, um, <laughs> but. It's just kind of like you that know, was just I, a side complaint you gave, yeah, <laughs> for no reason. But okay, um, but it's just you know nowadays um, rappers are just when they're in touch with reality is so much better. Like I can't say enough how much I love when a rapper who is just in touch with reality like you know they'll come and they'll be like okay like when a rapper knows kind of they just don't deserve the cover versus like you know them like fighting for the cover and it's like. What? Like, come on, like, let's be realistic here. Um, so I love that Riggs made that point of like, you know, just kind of rappers, just kind of even early in your career, which we shouldn't even have to say. But like, you know, you just being in touch and knowing that even if you're hot in your city, when it comes to breaking out of your city, you kind of have to be a little more humble. Got to be on the humble tip. Usually. Yeah, usually, unless it just takes out of here with new music. And I mean, I wonder how I wonder how humble Fetty had to be. You know, once the music started picking up um, so quickly and the songs started picking up, once he got in that groove and he's three songs deep on radio, you know, how much is he humble or how much does that change? And not to say him particularly, but we see a lot of artists very quickly get one or two songs and their whole attitude changes. We see them come up when the song just came out or right before the song or when it's starting to bubble. We see them a few months later and the song's bigger and the whole person can be a different person. And I think that that's almost a whole different topic and maybe an episode we should add on, I'm making a no for, <laughs> is putting your ego in check. Um, but that's a huge aspect of it is that how can you be realistic of who you are as an artist, um, who your competition is, if you're not being realistic with kind of where you stand with things and your ego's already got you out of control. But definitely make note for the ego episode to, to be added <laughs> on to this. Um, besides that, I think that this wasn't as interesting of a topic as some as the other ones because I don't think there's an easy way to spell this out of what you could do. Right. But I do think it 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 clarifies the walls that artists hit, whether they be from an established hip hop city or a non established hip hop city, and that no matter what, you all have to look at where you stand before you make your next moves and it comes down to really being cognizant of the artist that you are, what the ones in your city did kind of before you are or what your competition's doing. And then to try to move from there. For sure. Um, totally, there's no way to kind of spell expanding out of your city out. It's kind of, you know, a different journey for everyone. Like, it was different for Kid Ink versus Fetty. Like, I'm sure Kid Ink, as he explained, had, like, you know, many trials and tribulations. And well, even more to that, difference, I think, from Kid Ink and Schoolboy Q. You know, yeah. let's say they're not from exactly the same place, but just, you know, summing up to the West Coast, mm -hmm. um, you know, or or Absol and, and Kid Ink is that, you know, here you've got somebody with an established crew versus someone who doesn't have an established mm -hmm. crew. So they're going to have to move differently, yet they're both from the West Coast. So I think it's realizing what is your situation, what's your ammunition, and then working off of there. And then how important is the DJ? How important is um, getting your city on the map? Those are all the things that you, you have to decide. Because at some point, you got to realize that, you know what, you're bigger than your city. You know, there's 50 cities out there. There's 50 states out there. There's a bunch more cities out there. And hip-hop is worldwide. So just catering to your city is not going to do it anymore. Right. But you got to be able to figure out how to cater your city first. Mm -hmm. All right, that's it for this episode. Stay tuned next week. Next week is social networking. I don't know your shit on social networking, but there's a more official name for that episode. I promoting believe. yourself. Promoting yourself. Yes. So next week, promoting yourself. We have uh, Fetty Wap. Go Karen figure. Civil. Jersey. Karen Civil. Jersey. Isn't she Jersey too? Yeah. <laughs> Just a Jersey. And who else? And jo uh, we got Joey Badass. He added a little bit more um, from our first interview with him. I love Joey Badass. So um, <laughs> so we have a little bit more from him to add in that. Uh, Hopefully you, hopefully you guys learn from. Thank you, thank you.